What's going on today, guys? So today I'm going to talk about the history of the world hour record in cycling. Uh, the world hour record, for those of you who don't know, is set on a velodrome. So in 1873, uh, the first record was sent, uh, set by James Moore, who rode a distance of 23 kilometres. Uh, in 1893, uh, Another rider by the name of Henry Desgrangi uh, rode a distance of 35 kilometres on one of these penny farthing uh, bikes that you can see here with the big wheel in front. Uh, in 1898, we had a rider by the name of Willie Hamilton ride 40.78 kilometres, uh, which is unbelievable in before the 19th century, so um, really, really, really impressive there. Uh, here next, we've got uh, Fasto Coppi, who won the Tour de France twice and won the Giro five times, who rode a total distance of 45.79 kilometres in an hour, okay? And this is in 1942, so really decent riding there. You know, in the time of World War II, um, really old school, tough sort of a guy. Uh, and as you can see here um, in the images, just a regular sort of a guy. Um, so, yeah, quite in those days, they didn't have, remember, they didn't have the nutrition or the training methods that we have today. So, or the aerodynamics or the bikes or anything like that. You can see here that. Um, Copy is actually having a cigar after the Giro or the Tour de France here after the race because they don't have that knowledge of health and nutrition like we do today. Alright, coming into the 70s now, in 1972, uh, Eddie Merckx, which is the man here, uh, argue, arguably the best rider of all time, uh, set a record, um, a new hour record, um, riding 49.43 kilometres in Mexico City, which is high altitude. If you want to know how high out the altitude is, the altitude was 2,300 metres above sea level. Okay, so that's pretty thin air to be doing um, an endurance activity there. Uh, it was said that Merckx's best FTP was 455 watts, um, but for the hour record, because it was above uh, sea level, um, the power reduction to altitude is 10% and he was around that 400 watt mark for that hour record. Okay, so very good. And they also said he was a little bit past his best um, or wasn't in prime form. Next athlete here, we've got uh, Francesco Moser. So this is a shot from him in 1984, another pro rider. Um, Moser broke the 12 year old record uh, set by Merckx, uh, riding uh, and doing a new record of 51.15 kilometres in the hour, okay? So really, uh, once again, really powerful riding, but get this, uh, Moser was said to put out 400 watts, um, and the reason being him going further than Merckx was he used disc wheels and a skin suit and was much in a much lower position there, as you can see at the front, as opposed to what Merckx was. So, um, yeah, similar similar power outputs, but more aerodynamic position there. Um, okay, so next rider here we've got is uh, arguably the best time trialist of all time, Miguel Indurain. Uh, in 1994, uh, 10 years after uh, Moses' uh, record, uh, Miguel Indurain rode a distance of 53.04 kilometres and uh, broke Graham Obrey's record, who we'll get to in a minute. Um, Miguel Indurain rode a Pinarello that weighed 7.5 kilograms. As you can see, a very aerodynamic bike there for its time in the early 90s with those discs. Um, quite a nice skin suit there, nice aero helmet. So Miguel produced an estimated 510 watts for this effort at 80 kilograms, all right? So absolutely outstanding power, even higher power output than, 
those athletes that um, those athletes such as uh, Bradley Wiggins can put out today. So here we've got Obri. So Obri, um, there's a bit of speculation and a few things about Obri's position here. He adopted this Superman style riding position and also this like elbow tucked in position on his bike. Um, his power output was an extra, uh, estimated 360 to 370 watts. Um, he his records um, was set after Moses, and he was doing 52 kilometers an hour, 51 kilometers uh, kilometers uh, in the in the hour, that sort of thing. So very good. All right. So um, following Obrey, we had uh, Boardman, who Chris Boardman, who I covered in the last time trial. Uh, video. So Chris Boardman, he, he set a record in 1996 riding 56.37 kilometers. Okay, so that's a 56.37 kilometers an hour for an hour. Absolutely outstanding. Estimated uh, 462 watts for that one there. And as we can see here, he also had a go on just a normal road bike in order to see if he could beat the effort of Eddie Merckx, um, so which he did 400 and uh, 400 watts for on that one there to go 100 meters further than Merckx. So next here we've got Jens Voigt's uh, frame. So in 2014, the UCI changed the rules to two separate classifications. Um, so Jens Voigt came along and went 51.1 kilometers. Um, on his track, on his track bicycle, um, with an estimated or with a power output of 412 watts. In 2015, we have Rowan Dennis uh, come out and do 52.49 kilometres uh, with an estimated power output of 400 watts. So, wattage can change depending on the athlete and the size of the athlete, that sort of thing, the aerodynamics uh, with Merckx, because he did his at high altitude, for example. Um, they say there's less air um, at high altitude, therefore you can go faster on lower wattage. Um, so here, coming back to the image here, we've got Bradley Wiggins. So as you can see, an absolute perfectionist, really good time trial position there. And he um, did a, he's, has the current hour record of 54.52 kilometers. So he held 54.52 kilometers an hour for an hour, and he was able to produce 440 watts average power for that hour, okay? So if you look at the average power over time with all these cyclists, in the last 30 odd years, there's not a lot of difference between a pro rider 30 years ago and a pro rider today over an hour. Um, please, please post your uh, comments and questions down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you later.